Now, I mentioned earlier uh, not doing the transparency thing, and I'll tell you why I'm not going to do that, uh, or even, well, well, we'll stick with transparency. So in Marmoset 4, there is some really cool stuff you can do with the uh, the new ray tracer. So we have, see you have render turned on and use ray tracing is also turned on. I'm going to go in here to my main camera, and again, we're going to just zero out these rotations. If you're just joining us, we're rendering on a flat plane to make it look like a 3D object, uh, just without not having to deal with UVs uh, to get a really cool image. However, if you go in here, you can do Control shift l to pull up your library. Um, or if you watch the previous video, you can go in here to your texture tab, and you can do texture projects and do all sorts of really cool things. But we'll stick in the classic view for now. We'll go in here to Window, Library, and we're just going to dock this right at the bottom here. Incidentally, if you want to undock something, just click this little arrow button out. You're going to move it around wherever you want your interface, but again, we'll just keep this docked at the bottom. Now, if we go down here, or I'm sorry, up here to the materials, let's choose, let's go to transparent, so we can start mess around with some of these transparent materials. Uh, so for instance, let's say we want to drop a sapphire material on here, so I'm just going to click and drag, drop that right on our object. Let's go to our sky presets. We'll go down to our sky section. Let's choose midday, and then just load in this midday thing. So I can hold down shift, and rotate this around. We just have a plane, and there's nothing plugged into this material here. So really quickly, I'm going to go to my uh, previous location where I know my baked out materials are, or my baked out maps are. Z plugin data, ZBrush compositor data in this location right there. And let's go to the skylight. We'll just delete that out of our scene. So we've got a flat plane on here. We've got a sapphire material, and we need to plug in some of our maps here. Uh, albedo I can skip, but let's open up this displacement. Say height. I'll draw my displacement map in here. Go ahead and crank that scale up. And again, if you go rotate to the side here, let's go ahead and rotate our light around a little bit. Since it's just a flat plane here, you can kind of see what this displacement's doing, kind of putting our bug in the scene. Again, albedo we don't really need. You're going to see uh, transmission is set to refraction because we're rendering a transparent material. Another thing to keep in mind is up here in render, make sure ray tracing is turned on and your main camera is set to full quality for this. Further down, Reflection is set to uh, GGX. Microsurface is set to Roughness, and it's down to zero. So it's very shiny, as opposed to a matte surface. And then down here under Reflectivity, this is very important. The Refractive Index is already set for, set for a gem sapphire, which is at 1.77. And Metalness is down to zero. Uh, there's a couple more maps we need to put in here, though, so we can see our bugs. Let's go in here to Normals. I'm going to drop in my normal map. And then again, we'll just look at this from the top down here, main camera set to orthographic and then rotations off. So here we can see, okay, now we got our displacement and our normal map on there. We see a kind of a sapphire bug, but it's very dark. Normally I would say go in here to render and crank up your transmission and your bounces so that uh, it's not rendering so dark. However, because this is just a flat plane, I don't think it's gonna ever render out correctly. Um, just so we can see it a little bit better, I'm gonna go down here and just add a really quick transparency here. And we're gonna drop our opacity map in there and then set that to R. So here we kind of have a gem bug, but you can see it's always going to be really dark. Even if I go in here to my transparent and just toss a glass on here and do the exact same thing. I'll speed through this real quick. You can see even glass renders that really dark. And again, I think that's because we're rendering on a flat plane. There's no volume, real volume to this. However, if I go back in here to ZBrush and let's just hit the comma key, let's go to tool. I'm just going to grab the dog Z tool, say export. Throw this right on my desktop as dog obj. And then go back into Marmoset and just drag that from my desktop right into my scene here. Let's go ahead and turn off our plane. So let's take this eyeball here and just turn that off. Let's zoom in to where we see our dog. Now our dog is kind of faceted, so you can go ahead and click the dog and let's go ahead and turn on subdivisions, maybe subdivisions level of two. And now let's drag a sapphire material over here to my material. Sapphire two, we'll drag that on here. Let's go back to our skylight here. Let's crank up that brightness a bit. So here, if I hold down shift and move this around, you see I get a pretty good result. If I drag glass over here and drag it onto my object, it looks just like glass, no problem. And while I'm doing this, by the way, if I go down here to glass, you're going to see the uh, refractive index for glass is going to be set to 1.5 automatically. For sapphire, it's going to be 1.77. For diamond, it's even going to be higher at 2.418. So it's already going to, it's dialing in all of the values that it needs to be in order to get this rendered as diamond. Now, if you are going to do this, probably turn on allow caustic pass. And you know what? Let's try this too. Scene, add object, shadow catcher. 
And let's take this main camera here and we'll say, select the main camera over here. And just temporarily, we're going to switch this from orthographic to perspective. And like I was saying before, if you had this uh, originally set back to like a very low number, like one, that's the result you're going to get. You're going to get. So cranking these up as you're getting these, you're getting more and more realistic bounces. So we'll go ahead and set that to like 11. And then again, bounces down to one, two, and then three, and then past three, you're probably not going to get much uh, of a difference. And in fact, let's go to our sky here and I'm just going to add a light up here and then choose that light and crank up that brightness. And we choose, uh, select the skylight and go down here to diameter. As we crank that up, that'll kind of soften our shadows away from the source. And then you can shift right click to move that around. So you can see you can do transparent materials, but on a flat plane, it's probably not going to render correctly, at least the way we're doing with our look dev.